bless their families and bring them home safely. We're thankful for the race car drivers today who inspire us to dream mighty dreams and ignite our passion to push ourselves. The ultimate capacity and potential as human beings. Bless them with safety and clear minds that they might compete to the best of their ability and that obviously the best driver this day with his crew will win. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Here today to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, she's the 2013 Georgia Music Awards winner for Best Female Country Artist of the Year. Please welcome rock and country recording artist, Angela Rain. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Will Kyle Busch win his first ever Atlanta race? Can Kevin Harvick win four straight? Could one of the teenagers beat the big names? We're going racing on FS1 next.
Welcome back to Xfinity Series Racing from Atlanta. Today's guest driver analyst is Clint Boyer. The Kansas native, a man of many interests. You all know he loves his Kansas City Royals, but he's usually on wheels. Tonight he's heading to Atlanta Supercross competing in the whole shot challenge. Well, I think Ricky's going to get the whole shot, but I think if there's someone to put up a fight, probably be Clint. It's tough to predict. It's going to be close between Biffle and Boyer. Clint, I hope you've been practicing. I'm not sure if he's been on a bike lately. Because if you haven't, you're going down. Good luck tonight, Clint. Don't make a fool <laughs> out of yourself. Oh, my, my. I thought Double A and Michael Waltrip would be tough for Clint Boyer to handle. You got Danica to reckon with, son. She's saying her man's going to get the whole shot tonight at Supercross. I love it. It's what competition's all about. But I think she's going to be the signboard girl. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that could be interesting. We all might get stuck in the gate. Why do all of a sudden I feel like I'm on two wheels next to Waltrip and Boyer? Good to have you with us on this uh, Saturday afternoon from here at Atlanta. We all know how difficult this track is. But you were just out there for spring. Sprint Cup final practice. Give us an idea of what we're going to see. Well, the old girl's getting slick. I mean, we all know that coming into this place. That's why we love it. Um, slipping and sliding around. Grip is, is a premium. You've got to be able to move around, find yourself a good good momentum, a uh, place where you can find, you know, you, you can't put input in anything. You want to be able to just barely put anything into the wheel. You don't want to be stabbing the gas. You want to be very gingerly with every input that you put into this race car today. And a guy that can do that, is going to prevail. You got to be super smooth, but we have a template, right? The 88, the 22 car here one year ago led 160 of the 60, 163 laps. They dominated. So we just figure out what they do and do that, right? <laughs> well, I think there's some kids that say, no, we're going to do it our own way. Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, they're both really fast. They've got those two covered. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the old veterans stock up against the rookies today. Here's what I love on the front row. You've got Kyle Busch. He's the all-time wins leader in the series, starting on the pole. Next to to Eric Jones, who's 19 years old. Both of them, can you believe this, trying to get Joe Gibbs their first ever win in the Xfinity Series here at Atlanta. It's going to be a fun Saturday afternoon. Let's go trackside for the command. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome today's Grand Marshals, Houston County Sheriff Colin Talton and Chattahoochee County Sheriff Glenn Cooper. Drive us, start, start your engines. engines. It's just about time. Round two for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. For the 25th time, we are racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway from the driver's seat with Elliott Sadler next on FS1.
Series have fired, and the Xfinity Series drivers ready to do battle at Atlanta. How fun is it going to be watching these kids race for this championship? Here in Atlanta, you got to put your work gloves on. There's battles all over this racetrack. That's just putting it all out there. In a word, domination. Kevin Harvick, third time in a row, he's a winner in the Xfinity Series at Atlanta. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And now we go from the driver's seat, talking with Virginia's own Elliott Sadler, starting 16th today, Michael. Let's see what Elliott's got to say. Hey, Elliott, it's Michael Waltrip and Clint Boyer up in the FS1 booth. Do you got a copy on us, friend? Yes, sir. I got you loud and clear. Well, we're going to be brought to you by Goodyear today. How are you going to take care of those Goodyear tires and race your way in content into contention late like you were at Daytona last week? Well, I tell you what, that's a pretty good question. Uh, we fought a little loose uh, yesterday in practice and a little bit this morning on our qualifying with these Goodyears. And guys have done a lot of work to this one main Camaro, and it's a... It's a slippery slope, man. You got to go on restarts. You got to put yourself in position, but you also got to save a little bit for the end. So we'll continue to work on it, try to save the right rear as much as we can through a run, and hopefully uh, be there at the end when it counts. Hey, hey, it's Clint. Man, I'm pulling for you as always. You know that. But uh, I'm going to go along those same lines, and it's all about tire wear, managing this tire wear. Where exactly do you feel like, with all these options on the racetrack, that you can save as the, the tires the most? Yeah, that's a, um, I'm going to kind of play it by ear and see if my car is tight or loose and see if we can run the bottom a little bit to, to save the fronts a little bit. And, you know, we'll just have to move around. But, look, that's what makes this racetrack so much fun. It gives you so many options. You can move around a little bit depending on uh, what you're fighting. And, um, you know, that's what we'll look to do today. I think a lot of guys are definitely going to be fast on the bottom with these cars. And I uh, hope we can make ours work there, too. If not, we'll, we'll move around and try to find the best spot. All right, bud, we'll check in with you later during the day. Drive fast. Your heels are playing this afternoon. I'm sure Blake Shelton's in a concert somewhere, so you need to enjoy that tonight. 10 4, guys. I do want to send a shout out to our military, all the men and women that protect us, not only here at home, man, but also abroad, so we can do what we love and, and race here at Atlanta this weekend. Two laps until we go green. Let's hear from our pit reporters. We start things off with Jamie Little. Good afternoon, Jamie. Good afternoon. You know, Brad Keselowski is back in an Xfinity Series car here in Atlanta for the first time since 2012. He's also working alongside Brian Wilson, a new crew chief, for the first time. Now, we haven't seen the speed out of this 22 car that we've expected over the years, but he's hoping the hot and slick temperatures will play into his hands and he'll get his first win here. Chris Neville? Well, Daniel Suarez is starting in the top five for his fifth straight race dating back to 2015. He said something last year just clicked. He now thinks his first win is going to come on a mile and a half track. And he had the best 10 lap average in practice yesterday. Could he be the one that gets JGR their first win at Atlanta? Matt Yoakum. Chris, Atlanta is a special place for Ty Dillon. Three years ago, he scored his first truck series win right here at AMS. It's a big weekend for Ty. Today marks his 24th birthday. He's also filling in for the injured Tony Stewart. Tomorrow in the Sprint Cup Series race, he'll roll off 18th then, but his focus solely on trying to lock himself into the Xfinity Series chase. Now, he told me he loves how his car launches off turn four, especially on the bottom. Doesn't have the initial speed, but the fall off, not that dramatic. He's pretty excited starting six today. Adam? Matt, the last time he went to victory lane, July 2014 at Indianapolis, trying to become the first driver ever in the Xfinity Series to win on his birthday. Warming up, 54 degrees, and I'm guessing that track temperature going to come up as well. Oh, absolutely. As a fan, man, that's what you want to see. You want this baby hot and slick, want to see these cars slipping and sliding around, and these boys earning their money. We've seen this race one, Clint, dead on the bottom of the racetrack. Harvard put on a clinic, clinic here a year ago. What did you feel in practice with your car, your cup car? Was the bottom better or is the top where you want to be? Well, that's just it. You know, something about this racetrack, I, I, personally, this is what I love about it. Sometimes it's on the bottom, sometimes it's not. This groove is going to move around, and you're going to see that today. Richard Childress racing car strong a week ago at Daytona. Best in qualifying today, that guy, Ty Dillon, rolling off sixth. All right, buddy. Happy birthday again. Go out there and get your birthday present. These guys will take care of you on pit road and, uh, you know, tire management is what it's all about, buddy. Sir. 
You've gotten those pre-race speeches before, haven't you? Glenn? Oh, yeah, and I love it because he always puts the pressure on the pit crew right off the bat. These boys are going to take care of you on pit road, aren't you, boys? <laughs> Subliminal message. Pop, pop. Grandfather oh, pop, Richard pop. Childress up on the spotter stand or on one of the haulers down here in the garage, keeping an eye on Ty Dillon, who's going after his second career victory today. And as Matt pointed out, if he gets to victory lane, he'll be in the playoffs this September, Michael. Oh, Pop Pop's coached the three to victory lane many a times over the years, and it's cool to hear his voice. Just calm and cool and relaxed. You can tell Richard's seen a battle or two in his day. Just so neat to see these guys as they're coming to the green here. You know, what, what's going to happen in turn one? Is this thing going to wash up? I've got to save these tires. How long do I, you know, wait for these tires to come in? I mean, attrition is a big part of this race. The balance of experience and youth on those first two rows. Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, share row one. Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson in row two. It's the second race of 2016 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Time to go green here at Atlanta. Already got the 22 looking three wide. Love it. Making it work, too. Drives around Brendan Poole and got that spot away from him. From seventh to the top five in one corner for Brad Keselowski. Eric Jones holding tough on that high side against Kyle Busch as well. There goes Kyle edging ahead. Saw Larson slide into line behind Suarez. Three wide for fifth. Big surprise, Kevin Harvick's on the move, huh? There's a lot of questions to be answered about the 88 and the 22 car. You can see them running together there. Harvick uncharacteristically up on the high side. We've seen him work that bottom historically, but like we said earlier, his car hasn't been that great. What are they saying about the 20 car? Start violation, we got a report. They have posted Eric Jones in the 20. What a rough start for him. That's big. You know, it's such a difficult thing. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of things going on right there trying to let's watch this here. You, you uh, make yeah, that call, Clint. You gotta figure this out tomorrow hey, out there on the track. What'd you see? Pretty easy. He just beat the leader to the line and he can't do that. Larry, what did you see there on the, the opening start of the race? Yeah, what he'll have to do, Adam, is he'll have to come down pit road and do a pass-through penalty, which means go down pit road. He doesn't have to stop in his pits, but maintain that 45 miles per hour. The last thing he'd want to do is speed on a pass-through. Well, that's the last, another thing that he can't do, Clint, he can't slide those tires, and that's going to be very easy to do. He's probably a little hot under the collar about what happened. It's really important to get to pit road in a hurry, but he can't slide his front tires. Kyle Busch started on the poles, led every lap. Here's Paul Menard going to the outside of Brad Keselowski. Let's listen in to Team 18. I love spinning my tires the entire time. That's not fair. Yeah, simple. Yeah, I mean, Kyle's trying to take care of him there. You know, he said he spun his tires. But at the end of the day, what the 20 can't do right now is panic. He's got a fast, hot ride. It's early in the race. If there was ever a good time to do this, right now is it. He'll come in, take his penalty, and get right back or up there. Do not have right. to stop. They're saying he does not have to stop. No, he doesn't. Here, don't make a mistake. Or up pit road, nice and smooth, we'll be fine. I think I was just the crew reminding him it's a pass-through yeah. penalty. You comes. don't need to stop in your box. Here he comes, Matt. And he asked his team exactly what did I do, and his spotter told him, even though the 18 admits he spun his tires, you still beat him to the line. Now it's just going to be a pass through penalty. Don't dig our hole deeper at this juncture. Let's just try to get back on track and focus. And Clint, that's just on the initial start of the race. If they start evenly later on a restart and he beats him to the line, that's perfectly fine. But on the initial start, you can't beat the leader there. No, you can't. I mean, it's just one of those things. That's a, a team effort, obviously, as a driver. You want to hear your spotter telling you, you know, you can't do that lift, lift, lift. And, and unfortunately, this got caught. But they're going to make up for it. We've got a race going on. Kevin Harvick started 10th, up to third. You know, last year, he put those left tires on the yellow line, didn't move off the bottom. Today, running the wall to get to the front is Harvick. And that's what I love. I mean, you can't go through them. you got to go where they're not. And right now, they're not on the top. How would you like to be one of these kids and say, and your crew chief, your spotter says, study Gar have Kevin Harvick's game plan. Do what he did a year ago. What, but he's not doing that this year. He's doing something totally different. Well, he's doing one thing he did last year, going to the front. <laughs>
<laughs> Eric Jones, by the way, had that pass through penalty for jumping the start of the race, scored 39th, did not lose a lap. You know what he wants right here? A caution. Tighten this thing back up because his biggest challenge is going to be holding off his teammate Kyle Busch as fast as he is. It won't be long before he's knocking on his door. And it's so difficult to be in that situation because you know you're being hard on the rear tires and you know you can't afford to do that. You've got to be patient. Let this car just have its head. Just kind of let it be, you know. Do not put the hammer down. Don't abuse those tires because it's going to get worse. And he got the caution he needed. Problems for David Starr in the 44 out of TriStar Motorsports. Before the caution, you saw Kevin Harvick go to the outside of Daniel Suarez. The 88 up to second in the running order. Yeah, that one looks sick. Starr was 21st when he had the issue. That allows Eric Jones to close up to the back of the field. Could possibly see him on pit road for a little fuel, just a strategy play um, since he's going to be in the back anyway. Be interesting to see how they handle this. He's got a, a rookie crew chief in Chris Gabehart. As a rookie crew chief, you got to think about so many things. This is not something you plan for coming to a race when you're starting on the front row. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, you know, but but that's what I love about this sport. You got to be able to adapt to any situation, and they're going to do that, and we're going to watch them. I'll tell you one thing that I have been watching. It's going to be interesting. I know Kyle Busch, I've raced against him. As that 88 approaches him, he's going to move up and take that line. He's a smart race car driver, and that's when we're going to have a battle. Just talking about Chris Gabart, his situation. What are you thinking here, Larry, from a crew chief? perspective. Well, what I was going to tee Clint up on is if this was the cup race tomorrow, lap eight, lap nine, you're on pit road for four fresh Goodyear tires. But remember, these guys only have five sets of Goodyear tires laying in the pit. So as much as they'd love to come ahead and get fresh tires, can't do it now. Absolutely. But, you know, it's the same for everybody. No different than the Cup Series. We would all be coming in and taking tires where right now I would say these guys are going to, you know, unless you're really battling and you're back in the pack, I would say, you know, just like we were talking, that 20 car, he might come down, make an adjustment if he needs to and go on. Yeah, and Larry, if you divided the sets of tires evenly over the race, you could get a set of tires every 25, 27 laps, and certainly not to that stage yet. Working lap nine, Kyle Busch started on the pole. He's led every circuit so far. If you're just joining us, Eric Jones got penalized at the start for beating the leader of the line. He started on the outside of row one, had a pass-through penalty. He scored in 38th. Our first caution of the day for David Starr. Looked like he had an engine problem. He was smoking down the back straightaway, and now we'll see if we'll have any takers here in our first caution of the afternoon. You can see them pulling down there looking in the mirror. They want to, but nobody <laughs> will go with them. They all want tires. The crew chief <laughs> said it's way too early. Kyle Busch out front at Atlanta Motor Speedway.
early caution for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Atlanta. They're getting lined up for a restart. And I think this one's going to be really entertaining. Pole sitter, race leader Kyle Busch choosing the inside lane to his outside this time, Kevin Harvick, the guy that's won the last three races here. And also, you know, Harvick liked that outside. That's where he was running the leader down. And, and you know, Kyle was making hay on the bottom. So it is going to be interesting to see what happens when we get into turn one. Brendan Gaughan likes that outside lane, too. He's going to restart ninth here is up there in the high side, but it runs so well on the exit that I gain whatever I lose on the way in back. Early on, that high side, me and Harvick took off and passed, guys. It was pretty good. You know, and I was like, oh, hey, it came in quick, but I got to get back down, like you said. And that's a, that's a guy that loves to run the high side. And yeah. if he thinks he's got to get back down, that's not where he wants there that car. There must not be any grip up there, huh? <laughs> I'm going to complete... Lap 12 as we get the green flag. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson, Ty Dillon, your top five. Good start by Kyle. Got his nose out in front of Kevin as they head toward turn one. Well, they're getting after it behind him. Ty Dillon low, middle is Kyle Larson. Here's Brad Keselowski on board, trying to go to the outside of the three of Ty Dillon. That's the battle for fifth. Man, you can just hear the throttle on time. Really hard on the throttle with these cars. It's fun to see. You know you're driving with the steering wheel then. When that the baby's wide open and she's coming out from underneath of you and you can't afford to lift, you got to steer it. Suarez looks good on the restart down in that inside lane. Paul Menard doing a nice job early in that black and yellow number two. Look at this crossover by Harvick. He wants the bottom side of the racetrack and he's gonna take it away from Suarez. That's just that run you get off of turn two without a high side. It's always uh, you know, a big benefit on the exit over there. Lesson learned there if you're Suarez. I, I bet he hasn't seen that move too many times. No, but I think that's uh, you know, a smart move by Suarez too. That's a pretty tough cookie right there that you know you're gonna, you know, following him, seeing what he's doing this early in the race is pretty smart driving by him. And look where Kozlowski is sticking that 22 car. He looked up the middle of two of them down in turns one and two, falls in on the high side, making progress up in the top five now for Brad. Second, out. second caution of the afternoon. 25 of Chris Cockrum off the pace, coming off a of turn two. Had some issues with that car during qualifying and looked like maybe he spun out down there. A lot of smoke anyway. You know, last year in this race, we had three cautions. Only two in 2014 and already a pair in the first 15 laps today. Keeping an eye on Eric Jones, penalized at the initial start of the race. At one time was running 39th after the pass through penalty. Restarted 27th a moment ago and is now in the 20th position. Here's a look at what happened in turn two. Yeah, it looks like he just got loose down on the bottom, chased it all the way up, did keep it out of the fence for his guys and be able to you know, continue on and run the rest of this race. Pit road is open here, 15 laps on the board. Let's bring in Larry McReynolds. Larry, what do you think? Still too early, I'm guessing, based on the numbers these crew chiefs are looking at? Yeah, I mean, they only ran about a lap and a half of green right there. But what we might see, Adam, we're getting to that point of, the, of this window where you may see some guys at the back that maybe duck on the pit road and maybe try to get off sequence a little bit. We actually had Jeb Burton and Daryl Wallace that did it on that last caution, but I'm sure a lot because they were not very happy with the way their car was driving. But I just think it's too early for the leaders to come. Brad Kozlowski disagrees with you. He's gonna come and try it and bring a bunch of them with them, Larry. So uh, a lot of our top running cars are on pit road. Top six or seven elected to stay out here, but Brad Keselowski, one of those pitting, Jamie. In the very first pit box on the pit road, he said the car's really loose all over, getting really bad, especially the third mark through the corner. A four tire stop here. They were reminded they got an extra set this year. Justin Allgaier also coming down the pit lane. Blake Cook had a solid qualifying effort, taking advantage of our second caution of the day. He too gets service. Kyle Busch, the race leader at Atlanta. What's that?
NASCAR Xfinity Series underway here at Atlanta, and so far things trending differently than they have the last couple of years. Five combined cautions in 2014 and 15. Already a pair of yellow flags today. Kyle Busch started on the pole, has led every lap. Kevin Harvick, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson, and Ty Dillon, the top five. First driver in the top ten that has already made a pit stop. Darrell Wallace Jr. came down at lap ten. And Eric Jones made his pass-through penalty at lap five because of all the takers here on pit road. Has cycled back up to tenth on the restart. We get it as we complete lap 18. Kyle doesn't waste any time. And look at the charge by Ty Dillon. He's coming as well. It's like Kevin kind of held him down a little bit tighter that time. Ran the middle instead of going all the way to the outside like that. Eric Jones falling in love with the outside lane on the restart. From 10th and already closing on a position inside the top five. You know, he didn't pit that last time, so he's in a kind of a situation where he needs to go right here and get ahead of those because you know tires are coming behind you. This is going to be the fun story to watch during these opening laps of the restart is where Brad Keselowski goes. A lot of traffic right there. That's Corey LaJoy up to his high side and Ryan Sieg outside of that. But wow, those fresh tires are going to pay dividends for the 22. He could be leading this race if we go green for 20 laps or so, Adam. 88-19, trading punches. That's Kevin Harvick in the white and bright yellow machine. Went to the outside of Daniel Suarez, bringing Kyle Larson with him. The 42 slides into third, but maybe not for long. Solid battle here. Man, I tell you what, it just shows you how strong Eric Jones' car is. He's already back up there. He's been mired back in traffic. He's up front, got fresh air, and he's rolling. <laughs> These restarts are great, but they can create anxiety, can't they? Oh, absolutely, especially on this track. You know, it's so slick. You're down there. You're trying to get to the bottom. A guy's, you know, really close to you, taking the air off of you, which, by the way, you need all the air you can get. And, and you know, as you can see right there, it's pretty tense. Eric Jones has gone from 10th to 5th on the restart. Keselowski with tires has worked his way into the top 10 and not done yet. Saw Ryan Seek sneaking into the picture. He, too, has fresh tires. The driver out of Tucker, Georgia, 11th right now. He likes where Brad Keselowski's going, and I think he's planning on going there with him. Drives up on the outside of Darrell Wallace Jr. as well. Look at Keselowski cutting through the traffic. It's just so fun to see what, you know, four fresh feel goods do for you when everybody else is on old tires. I mean, look at that car in front of you, Ty Dillon right there slipping <laughs> sliding around. His car's stuck, and he's going to roll right by him. Brad is strong, 19th to 8th since that last restart, Jamie. Yes, and his biggest complaint before that round of pit stops was the entry stability. That was the problem. He wanted to come in, but they told us they thought more drivers would come in. So they stopped. They made a track bar adjustment, took four tires, and now he's feeling like Superman after restarting 19th. Yeah, I think they're all pretty well aware now, Jamie. It's all going to work out just fine. <laughs> this thing has a green flag feel to it at this track. You see a lot of long runs here. And now that the field's getting strung out a bit, Brad would like to see about a 50-lap one here. Now, I know how much homework you do, Michael. And the stat is the last three races here have had a green flag run of at least how long? 70 laps. Boy, you are always on it. And that's that's what a slick racetrack lends itself to, uh, uh, Clint. It's just you're so loose and sideways, can't hardly run into anyone because you're out of control yourself. That's exactly it. I mean, it's hard to put into words and explain, you know, just how loose these cars are and how hard they are to drive on a track like this. Three Fords inside the top ten. We've talked about Brad Keselowski. Jeb Burton is there, and so is Darrell Wallace Jr., Chris. Yeah, and Bubba Wallace, one of those drivers, is saying, was saying his car was so loose, it was wrecking loose in those first ten laps. He was one of the cars that came to pit lane on that lap 10 caution. They made every adjustment you can imagine to that car. He said right now, hey guys, this thing's actually working. If you ever question what tires mean here, Chris, we're finding out right now. There's Darrell Wallace Jr. making another move to the outside and Brad Keselowski incredible since the restart. That double deuce already back up into third. Yeah, and you don't want to, you don't ever want to give a position up, but these guys are being smart. Even these younger racers, you know, they, the tires are coming behind them. They're moving around. Just let that car go. You know, don't let it take, take the least amount of time possible to let him go around you so you can settle back in and manage those tires. Brad knocking on Kevin Harvick's door here. Eric Jones is thinking, I thought I was the story. I, I served a penalty early. I'm all the way back up to six. I haven't even been to pit road. And all you want to talk about is Brad. Brad's charging, though. He's getting ready to try to take second away from Harvick and set his sights on the lead. 
How much more good in those tires for Keselowski? Because eventually they're going to fall off too, and, and maybe this thing balances out a little bit. Well, without a doubt, they're going to even out. But, man, I'm telling you what, I, it, from the looks of things, it's going to be well after he's in the lead. Harvick likes that high side. I'm enjoying watching him be so versatile. Yeah, we the biggest thing that they can do right here is, like you see, Harvick going back to the bottom, letting him get in that dirty air. That's going to use his tires up. And, uh, you know, that's that's a good thing. That's that's a smart race car driver by Harvick right there. Looking at things by organization, Michael, we've talked about Harvick, best of the junior motorsports cars. Justin Allgaier also inside the top ten. A couple of young guns there. You saw Bubba Wallace going at it with Eric Jones. And Keselowski now has made the pass for second inside of Kevin Harvick. Wallace working over Jones. We've got racing all over this track. you got to give it up for Bubba Wallace. That car was not where he wanted it yesterday in practice. Bouncing around on the low side. He qualified outside the top ten. Uh, and, but but today he's got it together. The team, they did a good job huddling. We know what kind of momentum he left Daytona with after a strong run. And now here's an, here he is in Atlanta performing well again. Kyle Busch has led every lap of this race starting on the pole, but he is on point no more. Outside move, fresher tires, Brett Keselowski. Now the race leader. We're 28 laps in at Atlanta Motor Speedway. That didn't take long. Fresh tires, they're everything when it comes to AMS, and Brad Keselowski is proof of that.
by far the most challenging part about racing Atlanta. It's also the most fun part. Uh, it's got to be how worn out the surface is. Just the tire fall off in general makes it pretty tough. Well, the most challenging part about Atlanta is, is probably the most, the, the, all the bumps and stuff on each end of the corners. We still carry a ton of speed around this place, so uh, it really is a driver's racetrack, and it makes it a lot of fun, but very challenging. Close to the fourth of the field making their first ever start at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Among them, Brandon Jones, who scored in 15th. You heard him there. And all trying to run down Brad Keselowski, who got those four fresh tires at lap 16, and now he has checked out on the field. We can give me time, so I want to move around a little bit here. It's exploring, still tight and center. Plenty of loose in, but you helped that a bunch. A little bit of free off of two. You know, and that's that's just standard stuff, man. That's what I felt all day long and what I was telling my crew chief in the cup practice. You know, you can get these things uh, to where you really struggle for that turn in the center. You free them up, and all of a sudden, it's, things, it's breaking the tires loose as you turn off into the corner. And then turn two off of uh, the exit of turn two has always been a problem there. You just lose rear grip and start spinning in the tires. Kyle Busch now five seconds behind our race leader, Clint, in the uh, runner-up position. What are they saying? He, he's got to be wanting tires here, Matt. Five times he's finished second, but he does have two Sprint Cup wins here. And looking at the overall big picture, he told his spotter, Tony Hirschman III, when this race is over, I'd love to get together and talk. I want you to keep an eye on what you think my Sprint Cup car can do better versus watching my Xfinity car on the racetrack, the lines and just how it looks on the racetrack. Looking ahead of tomorrow, hoping for success today. Right there, he just nailed it. You know, everybody always asks me, does running Xfinity help you on the Cup Series on Sunday? Right there is a prime example of how it can help you. And Clint, I'm confused. These drivers talk about the bumps here and the lack of grip and your sideways. Why does everybody like it so much? Why is that so much fun for you guys? Well, it's just fun. At these speeds, you know, I'm telling you, the first time you pull out on the racetrack and, and you know, first practice, you get out there, you drive it off in the corner, and I mean, this thing slipping and sliding around. Any other mile and a half big racetrack like this, absolutely not. The tires are hard. They make a ton of grip. That thing's either stuck like glue or you're in big trouble. And that's what we saw at Daytona, too. Some of our stars just simply getting loose because the cars were stuck like glue, and then when they step out, they're gone. Here, you're constantly on the edge of uh, control, so you're ready for it. But it, Well, you're, it's not just like you're ready for it and that's what you save. It's just that the tire is obviously a little bit different than what we run on those uh, repaves and things like that. This, it, it, they're more forgiving, but then again, you're slipping and sliding around, you're working a lot more, but it isn't like it just breaks traction and you hit the wall. Um, the bumps, man, I'm telling you, the, the, the cars, that, as I'm sitting here watching this race, guys, the exit off of turn four, the cars that can stay pointed and keep uh, digging on the bottom are the ones that are fast. Talk about strategy. It's a head scratcher right now because really we got three different strategies playing out on track, Larry. Yeah, and I think this could end up being a chess match if we don't get a caution here in the next eight to ten laps because I think within that window you're going to see Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Kevin Harvick come to pit road and once one or two of them hit pit road, Everyone else is going to have to follow suit because then they're going to be beating everyone like we saw Brad Keselowski do with his fresh tires. I'll say this, though. Kyle Larson in third, Larry, running some really, really good lap times. And you know what? He's yet to come to pit road.
Entering today's race at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Brad Keselowski had led five laps all time. The 22 out front for 18 today is advantage. Just over seven seconds in front of second place Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson is third, Justin Allgaier fourth. Jeb Burton is fifth. Great afternoon going for Daniel Suarez. He's coming to pit road, so is Kevin Harvick, Jamie. Kevin Harvick won the last three races here, knows exactly what he wants in the race car. It's a four tire stop, air pressure, and a track bar adjustment as well, Chris. Daniel Suarez was happy with the balance of the car for the first 35 laps, but he's lost about five spots in the last 10 laps of the car, just way too loose. Matt? And the three of Ty Dillon is in that he wants a chassis adjustment to try to help the three, especially on exit. That's already completed, four tire change. Jamie. Brendan gone in as well, a four tire stop, air pressure to help that car. He was really loose. Let's go back to Matt. And Kyle Larson is in. They're gonna make a track bar adjustment on his Camaro. Trying to tighten him up just a little bit more. Left side tires going on. Eric Jones is coming in soon Roger as is Kyle Busch. Ray Black Jr. with problems. Lost the right oh front tire. Gosh. And the caution is out for the third time today. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle Busch was coming down pit road, but had not pulled into his box and will not. He's going to go straight through. This will shake things up a little bit. And Brad Keselowski, who had already been down the pit lane earlier, was yet to make a scheduled green flag stop in this cycle because he had more room to the good as far as his pit window. You can see an issue there with the right front tire on Ray Black Jr.'s car happening right in the middle of this round of green flag stops. It's going to shake up the, the order tremendously. Guys that hadn't been on pit road yet, Justin Algar, Jeb Burton, Brennan Poole, they all had pitted earlier along with Elliott Sadler. So this could turn, to, turn into a huge advantage for those teams. You can see he barely brushes the wall, but that tire's just gone, Clint. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a product of these long runs, uh, you know, over cambered, something like that. Uh, you may even just run over something. You never know. What did did you see any significant tire wear on your cup car when you were out there? I know it's a different tire. No, but, but I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> it finally goes it was the inner liner that blew out right there. It's just uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a shame that, you know, it tore his race car up like that, but it could have been a lot worse. He did a good job keeping it out of the fence. 15 cars on the lead lap. A number of these drivers that had made pit stops would take the wave around here. And Brad Keselowski, Justin Allgaier, Jeb Burton, Brennan Poole, Elliott Sadler, all drivers that had already made pit stops today will use this caution to come down and get their service, really help their circumstance in the race. Pits were closed there, so we're gonna run one more lap before we open it up and uh, let these guys come to pit road. and. Um, all of our leaders, with the exception of Paul Menard, have been on pit road once. And uh, Menard was was uh, was a guy that had stayed out along with uh, our leader Keselowski. But wow, what a shakeup in this running order. And it's going to send a lot of teams that were favorites, Larry. It's going to send them scrambling. Yeah, the only thing this will do, and I think Adam mentioned it, absolutely, Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, Kevin Harvick, Daniel Suarez, they will stay out and take the wave around. They will be at the tail end of the lead lap behind the other leaders. But I think what this caution did, it puts everybody back on the same tire strategy because actually the green flag pit stop started about two, two and a half laps before that caution. So this puts everyone somewhat back on even ground. But, but I think that early stop for Brian Wilson and the 22 of Brad Keselowski really has worked to their advantage, establishing this track position. And now, in a way, they're in the catbird seat. Let's follow up with Jamie. Well, guys, I just took a look at the tires that came off the 88 for Kevin Harvick. The right rear is just shredded. There's cords all over. He didn't say anything about the handling feeling off. They made an adjustment, but definitely something we need to keep an eye on. Well, and that's probably his car was leaning on the right rear. Ray Black Jr.'s was leaning on the right front. And uh, this place just wears those Goodyear's out tremendously. And it was time for a pit stop. They've only got a certain amount of shelf life on them. And they found out what that shelf life was. Oh, absolutely. We definitely saw the shelf life there. But, uh, you know, that's what it comes down to. A good balance on your race car, not having to put too much input in, into the steering wheel or the throttle to save those Goodyear's. Brad Keselowski on the pit lane, Jamie. He had luck on his side. They almost pitted the same time as the 18, but they opted not to. And he stayed out. Four tire stop for him. Justin Allgaier's car is getting better. Wipe the grill, four tires. Chris? Elliot Sadler also getting lucky, reporting a wheel vibration right before the caution came out. He's saying that car a little too loose, getting off. Matt? 
And Chris, when you talk to the Goodyear engineers, this is the trends that we typically see with this tire here at Atlanta. And you're going to see teams short pitting more, pitting at the front end of their window. Chassis adjustment already completed for Kyle Busch. Now he says the back of his race car just way too erratic all the way through the corner. Service complete. Great work by Jason Burdett and that 17, but Justin Allgaier picking up a position. They got off the pit lane before race leader Brad Keselowski. And those drivers that just pitted close to the window to being able to do this race on one more stop. Back live at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Time for our Ford Track Facts. Roush Fenway organization, all-time leader here. Seven trips to victory lane. And this is the second oldest asphalt that we compete on. Last repaved in 1997. Thanks for being with us on this Saturday afternoon with Michael Waltrip, Clint Boyer. I'm Adam Alexander. I obviously didn't get the memo on plaid. Good race so far. Uh, when we get the restart, Justin Allgaier going to be out front. I'm looking forward to this because he's a he's a dirt guy. He should be able to slide around and get something done here. Man, this is definitely a dirt guy's type of racetrack. A lot of fun to be able to race on this place. Ever since I first came here in my career, this was one of the places that I couldn't wait to get back to. We, we've got a little bit of everything on this restart. Our lineups jumbled up. Some people taking the wave around. Fresher tires on Keselowski. This race is playing right into his hands so far with that strategy move. He and Brian Wilson made on lap 16 coming to pit road, gave him a big advantage. It'll be interesting to see if he can take advantage of that for the rest of this race. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, everybody else had a chance to make some adjustments <laughs> there, too. There were 12 drivers that took the wave around, and some of the front runners in that category, Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, Kevin Harvick, Daniel Suarez. Notable drivers one lap down, teammates at Richard Childress Racing, Ty Dillon and Brendan Gone. They will restart here, 25th, 26th, respectively. We've cleaned up our third caution of the afternoon. Get the green flag as we complete lap 54. Whoa, aggressive start by Algar. He wanted that lane, that groove, that middle of the racetrack, and he moved right up on Keselowski and just took it away from him. 
Elliott Sadler now in that mix. Junior Motorsports starting to flex their muscles in the middle stages. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say. Both Elliott and uh, Justin got a good start right there on the bottom. Brad must have spun his tires a little bit or something because it stacked him up on the outside. I got a feeling that when Brad works his way around Jeff Burton, he's not going to be too happy with the way that restart went down. Justin Algar is the leader, though. He can choose the lane that he wants, but they uh, look like he and Brad were arguing over the same lane. Brad now to the outside of Jeb Burton, back up to third. Brad's hunting the high side. Check this out, Clint. Is this fair play? Watch Algar. He's a leader. He gets to choose where he wants to be, and it looks like Brad's trying to squeeze him down. Yeah, you can see Brad spinning right there. How's it look? It looked like he was, uh, you know, squeezing him down, but he was actually spinning the tires, and it looked like he almost got into him right there, but uh, they didn't. And Justin Allgaier's leading. And his teammate is right on his bumper. About the fact we got three Fords inside the top five. Mentioned Brad Keselowski, Jeb Burton, Ryan Reed, last year's Daytona winner there as well. He looks really good. Absolutely. I'd love Bush. to see that. It's been fun watching Reed this weekend because he's been fast in every practice. And last year he got off to a great start winning at Daytona. But after that, it was average at best. But he's better than average today. Absolutely. And tracks like this aren't easy for a team to come to and have speed. What's the word on Elliott Sadler, third right now, Chris Neville? Well, Adam, I told you during those pit stops, Elliott Sadler reported that he had a massive vibration right before that caution came out. Well, this is the right front tire that came off that car. You can see the inside shoulder of that tire uh, getting ready to fail. So Elliott Sadler getting very lucky early on in this race. This place will chew him up, won't it? And remember, he had pitted. So he had pitted on the lap 16 caution. So. Uh, be interesting to see how that plays out if it maybe the front end isn't set properly for these tires. And remember the bad luck for Kyle Busch was on pit road when the caution came out, lost a ton of track position. Here he is back in the top five, Clint. Absolutely. And, you know, going back to these tires, it's easy to, to be on the fence of, of you know, I want a better tire. I don't want these things to blow out. You can't have a, you know, a, a dangerous situation there. But I also think you can have too good a tire. I like that these tires are wearing out and you have to manage them uh, to be there at the end of these runs. You would have liked it in the 80s because every driver had to take care of their tires. That was part of your job. And uh, if you didn't take care of your tires, you watch Days of Thunder. You know, be oh, nice hurts. to your tires, Cole. <laughs> you pay the price if you didn't. Kyle Busch started on the pole, led 28 laps early. Another guy that deserves a shout out is Jeb Burton. He's got that Ford up in the top five, doing a Good great job. job. Nice straight, smooth off. The announcement came a few weeks ago that they were going to run the full season. Didn't have that plan, but they have managed the first couple of weeks of this year quite nicely and you mentioned it Jeb running really good right now fourth on the scoring pylon Matt and on the first run he was on the tight side they made a small chassis just remember this young man won a truck series race at Texas so he excels on the bigger tracks though right now they're telling him just a log lap settle in and ride right now he says the car just a little bit on the free side Clint, you talked about getting an adjustment. How effective are those adjustments at a track like Atlanta? Can you make a big swing at it? Yes, you can. You got to be careful doing so, though. You know, so much of this is the rear grip. You, you feel that rear grip off the corners. Man, it's really spinning the tires. I'm loose. I'm loose. I can't hold on to it. But you can tighten the car up too much. You get that thing where you're leaning on the front tires too much, it's going to snap up off the corner and make that problem even worse. Justin Allgaier leads this thing, but here comes Brad Keselowski. Great job, man. He's falling back. Now he's really fighting three and four, clear by ten. I can run this pace, but I'm afraid I'm still on the tires. You know, as a driver, I like hearing that crew chief, you know, pumping him up, being a coach, and, and getting him excited and keeping him up on the wheel. But when you look in your mirror and he's actually getting bigger when he's supposed to be getting smaller, is that confusing for the driver? Oh, well, that's the uh, that's the realistic situation going on. But nonetheless, it's always fun to hear somebody positive in your ear. I think this is something we're going to see a lot of this year, Adam, and that's Justin Algar leading laps. He's a talented racer. Clint talked about his dirt background. He won some dirt races down in Florida in his uh, modified car and obviously can get it done on all different types of tracks. You know, but you, you're sitting there listening to the audio and what I saw him going through turn three and four right there he wasn't been able to keep it right down on the yellow line that means he was a little bit tight he was having to scrub on them tires and lean on it pretty hard to keep it down there um, whereas brad was just kind of effortlessly running right there on the yellow line saw brad keselowski 
making moves through the field there, working lap traffic. He's running in the second position behind Justin Allgaier. And Kevin Harvick, who had to take the wave around, had lost a lap. And that cycle of green flag pit stops now finds himself solidly back inside the top 10, scored seventh. Let's go down to Jamie. And talking about Justin Allgaier leading this race, it's a boost of confidence. Remember, he's been racing in the Sprint Cup Series. He's back here in Xfinity and wants to prove he's a race-winning driver. Now, it was all about his pit crew on that last stop. They did a phenomenal job. It's the 48 as the 22 tries to go inside. It's the 48 Cup team pitting the seven. They gained him four spots, and that put him in the lead. What a race. What a great job. Algar just took the groove away and got that thing right to the bottom. And I tell you, this view, I love this view at this racetrack. You can see how sideways those things are and then boys pedaling them up off the corners. And credit, we watch these guys right on the yellow line. How difficult is it way late in the corner? That seems to be where Harvick is so good. He's able to hug that yellow line further around than the other guys. How hard is that? Well, that's also going clear back to practice sessions. You've got to be able to work with your crew chief, work with your guys and make the adjustments to, so you have an opportunity to do that. That's what makes the cars win these races. And that's the difference between the cars that win the races and the ones that don't are the ones that can exit the corner lowest. Did, did you get your old girl to do that? Still fighting with mine. We're, uh, we're feuding a little bit. <laughs> Another driver that uh, took the wave around, Kyle Larson, has worked his way into the top five. Brad Keselowski back in the race lead inside of Justin Allgaier, and it looks like he might bring Kyle Busch with him. A lot of drivers that have fought some kind of adversity today working their way to the front of the field, showing, sh showing how strong their horse is. And you can see that right there, what Clint was talking about. Allgaier, Allgaier missed the bottom by about a half a car length before he knew it. He was was two car links off the bottom and Kyle Busch drove around him. And man, let me tell you, turns three and four, it's almost like a, a, a train track. You know, you slide off in there and you're, you're waiting on it, waiting on it, and that baby either locks on the track or it doesn't and it shoots up about three feet and you never do get it back to the bottom and the guy that's locked on blows your doors off. The only thing missing with this picture is Kevin Harvick, right? You got Brad Keselowski there, Kyle Busch. Where's the guy that's won the last three? Then we would really have a nice tussle at the front. Well, this just has our philosophy when the race started uh, thrown all out the window. We had Eric Jones, we had Daniel Suarez up there battling with these cup veterans, but that's not the case. One guy that's been able to hang with them, though, is Jeb Burton. He's up in the middle of that mess, but uh, going to have a great battle for the lead here between these two. You know, another driver you throw in that mix, Kyle Larson, just like Harvick, as I said, he took the wave around. Larson fourth right now and only a couple of seconds behind this lead battle. You know, just watching those two cars go through three and four right there, you saw the 22 kind of bouncing around and moving and getting loose. That 18 seemed like it was locked onto that track like I was talking about and wasn't moving around as much, which, by the way, isn't wearing the tires out. And there you saw Harvick not too far back in the sixth spot. And keeping in mind when you look at those drivers at the front, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Team Penske, Joe Gibbs, they've never won here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Perhaps that could change today. And I'm already starting to worry about the 22. They've been a runner up here three of the last four races. The good news for them, they're out front right now with 69 laps complete. <laughs> That's a good Blow Saturday right there. <laughs>
Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway Xfinity Series Racing. 88 laps to go, and we have a new man out front, Danielle Trotta, alongside Larry McReynolds. Here comes Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle Busch, is, he's in traffic right now, trying to put more drivers a lap down. Almost went a lap down at lap 48, made a green flag stop as the caution was coming out. They did not stop in, in their pit box. He stayed on the new lap. But look at this battle between <laughs> Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. They are trading spots one and two. We'll go back just a few moments ago, Larry, and here comes Rowdy on BK. Yeah, he restarted 12th, and it took him just about 15 laps to get up there and battle Brad Keselowski for the lead. Brad tried to put the block on him here, but Kyle <laughs> says, no, 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 no. Interesting to note, these two cop superstars, two cup champions, neither has an Xfinity Series win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And that's hard to believe. And yes, she said Kyle Busch does not have a win here at Atlanta in the Xfinity Series. A man that does, Kevin Harvick. In fact, he's won the last three at Atlanta in the 88 for Junior Motorsports, Larry Prom. Yeah, and he looked like he maybe had about the third or fourth best car, but right when his, he made that green flag pit stop back on lap 46, they had a tire issue. And Jamie, he may have another tire issue. Well, he actually said there's something on the grill. There's got to be. The water temp was pegged about 280 to 290. He thought he was blowing up. He's keeping an eye on it. They're trying to decide if he should come in and get that grill clean. He was running, Jamie, in the sixth position when he made that unscheduled pit stop at lap 73. Right now he's 20th, one lap down, the second car in the one lap down category. So if they could get their problems rendered, perhaps they could get the free pass, get back in the game. But right now, going to be very challenging for Kevin Harvick to get his fourth consecutive win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Here's his teammate, Justin Allgaier. He's been solid today. Running fourth, has led 15 laps, but Paul Menard coming after him for fourth. Yeah, absolutely. I've been watching Paul for a while now. He's making good lap times. He's got that car, like I said, man, that one, that car that's going to stick down to that yellow line and be good down in three and four, she's going to the front. Paul Menard told us on NASCAR Race Hub this week, Chris Neville, Atlanta, his favorite track. I think we're starting to see why. Yeah, he's having a great day. Very quiet on the radio. The times that he has been speaking to the team, he said the balance is pretty good. If anything, I need a little bit of help getting off the corner. Jamie? And Chris, the 88, you see Kevin Harvick on the right side coming in. The temperatures were not dropping. Watch him tear the tape off the grill right there. Take it all off. Dave Allen said that is the call. Let's try to cool this thing down and salvage something here. And that's all they did. Same car they ran here a year ago when Kevin dominated, leading over 100 laps and picking up his fourth Atlanta win. This team went to victory lane last week. Chase Elliott behind the wheel at Daytona. Not going to work out for him today. Put the fate of Junior Motorsports in the hands of Justin Allgaier and Elliott Sadler. Sadler's dropped back out of the top 10. He's in the 12th spot, so Algar's solid, and Kyle Busch can't shake Kozlowski. Kozlowski's able to stay within about a second of him, so we talk about the adjustments. It looks like the 22 car is going to need to ask for one if he's going to beat Kyle today. Yeah, absolutely. It just, uh, you know, it all comes down to that tire wear. It, you can just watch these cars go through the corner and can tell that that 18 car is going to prevail right now until that 22 comes in and makes an adjustment. 30 laps since these guys were last on pit road. And I'm looking at the lap times for Kyle Larson. He has been consistently right there with both Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski, maybe picking up a little bit of ground. And give a nod to Daniel Suarez, last year's Rookie of the Year, another one of those drivers that was trapped a lap down on that last cycle of pit stops when the caution came out, took the wave around, and here he is in the seventh position. In fact, all three of Joe Gibbs' cars inside the top seven right now. Everybody chasing the lead dog. He's the all-time wins leader in the Xfinity Series. 76 victories for Kyle Busch. His lead a second and a half over Brad Keselowski.
Great day to play two here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Right now, the Xfinity Series. Later on, the Camping World Trucks. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. I want those Goodyears on my car because this is the equivalent of running 200 miles an hour on a gravel road. And these Goodyear tires just stand up to the punishment. And uh, these guys are able to make great lap times and just so thankful that Goodyear is a part of our sport. Is it really that extreme, 200 miles an hour on a gravel road? <laughs> yes. Ask this man. He'll tell you. You'd take eight of them if they'd let you. <laughs> Here's Kyle Larson going to second. We said he was fast. He's now in the runner-up position, driving around Brad Keselowski. You know what I love about Kyle Larson? He's versatile. We came to Atlanta, and all of us said he'll be against that wall. That's where he's got to be if he's going to win this race. He's good up there. He's like, I don't think so. I think I need to be down low. There's no one any lower. He can go wherever he has to go, and he's got a car right now that's faster than our leader, Kyle Busch. Got to give a call to his teammate, too. Right now, Brennan Poole, 10th. A, a rookie of the year contender. First trip to Atlanta. That's impressive. You know, on the break there, Michael, I was watching something that you just alluded to. There isn't anybody right up against the fence. You know, it seems like you're splitting that seam, uh, you know, that outside seam, but being right on the fence like we've seen in the past isn't just quite there yet. That move made me nervous. Uh, Kyle Busch strong right now, Matt. So far today's led 46 laps. And Kyle Larson is slowly closing in on Kyle Busch. Now, Busch said the car was really pretty decent. Not as good as it could be with the back of the car, but it was decent. About three laps ago, though, he said he has started to lose the handle. That's where you've seen the 42 of Larson starting to close in. The car's gone to the free side. He needs help on the front turn. And to try to hook up the back, they're going to do some adjustments on their next stop. You know, a lot of times there, guys, that front turn lends its hand to being too loose off, and then you're burning your rear tires up, too. You've got to make sure that you you got the turn you know, capabilities in the center of the corner to where you're not coming off of it with wheel and that thing snaps and burns the rear tires off of it. Our behind the wheel driver, Elliot Sadler, just loses the lead lap there as Kyle Busch works around him. Elliot's currently in the 16th position. He'd like to see the caution fly here so he could get that free pass and work on that one main financial Chevy and getting back in contention. Think about some of these drivers a lap down. Ryan Sieg, Dakota Armstrong is there. Ty Dillon, Brendan gone. Mentioned Kevin Harvick's problems earlier. So been over now 40 laps since our last cycle of stops. How do we manage the rest of this race with 70 to go, Larry? Well, Adam, I think you set it up when we had that last caution back on lap 48 and everyone made their stops at lap 51 except for the drivers that had made green flag stops prior to that. I think if you want to make this a one-stop race, you're going to have to run about eight to ten more laps. We know everybody's wanting tires, everybody's wanting adjustments, but here's the thing. If we see any of the leaders come to pit road, you cannot be far behind them because they're going to be beating you about two to two and a half seconds a lap. And, and Larry, you've operated in the day when you would just purposely run 30 or 40 laps, really shortstop this thing to split it up, have those fresh tires on the car. Haven't seen anyone use that strategy today, but it's certainly been successful in the past. Well, and, and Michael, if you're not inside the top, say, six or eight, you know what, maybe go with some different strategy and see if you can pull a rabbit out of a hat. Well, we saw Brad Keselowski earlier today take a chance. He came to pit road when the leaders didn't. He used that to lead a bunch of this race, so that worked. I think I'm with you, Larry. I'm If I'm running 8th or 10th and I haven't won one of these babies, especially with the chase format, Adam, you win, you're in. One of these guys maybe throws a Hail Mary here, comes to pit road and splits this up for two stops. We've got a number of guys in the top 10 that could roll the dice that are series regulars. Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, Justin Allgaier. And, you know, Kyle's been on these tires for a while. How hard is he working here, guys? You know, you see as his car is, is going around there through three and four, you can see the input he's putting in the wheel. He's still got a good hot rod, but I'm telling you, this Kyle Larson's coming in a big way. Remember at Texas, Adam, he had a really fast car down there. A tire rub bit him, had a flat tire. Yesterday in practice, the 42 car experienced those same issues. The team was really cognizant of it, though. Make sure they work, worked hard on getting the fenders away and the clearance that they needed so, so that that didn't happen today. So far, so good. Yeah, I talked to Mike Shiplett, crew chief for that 42 team in the garage this morning. Said, we really feel like we've got that buttoned up quietly confident with Shiplett, and you can see why he's closing in on the race lead here with 67 laps to go. Brendan Gaughan making a pit stop, Jamie. Brendan Gaughan said this is the best car he's ever had in Atlanta. Four tire stop here, air pressure adjustment to help him out. He was getting hot. They made sure they wiped the grill, got everything off. You're in a lot of rubber getting stuck in the grills out here, Adam. 
just normal debris on track, right, guys? Well, it's just, hey, we're talking about it. It's it's certainly not on the tires. It's, it's going somewhere, and it looks like it's going in their grills. Yeah, Comes we, Elliott Sadler. We talked about it being a high-speed gravel road. It's also a fast cheese grater. These tires are just being eaten away by the aggregate surface that the guys are racing on. Look at the move Larson's got off, too. Really good on the long haul is Kyle Larson. Outside of Kyle Busch, around the lap machine of Mario Goslin, new leader here at Atlanta, maybe. Kyle Busch battling back on the inside, side by side off the corner. This is good stuff. Not so fast there. And another really fast car. He's seven seconds behind though, but Paul Menard just keeps picking him off, charging his way to the front. Caution flag, a pit stop. We could see Menard really be a factor. And look who's right behind Menard. Eric Jones going to the inside of Keselowski and a spinner on the pit lane. That was Darrell Wallace Jr. Also getting out of shape down on pit road, the 13 of Josh Rayum. What happened with Darrell Wallace Jr., Chris? Uh, just coming to pit road, a little too hot there, a little out of control. We, they made a lot of adjustments on this car. The first round of pit stops, it made it better early in the run, but halfway through that run, he said, once again, this car just wrecking loose. I've got my hands full today. 14th, one lap down, was last year's runner-up in the Rookie of the Year battle, Darrell Wallace Jr. Brad Keselowski making a pit stop, Jamie. He's saying he's a little looser in and off, tight in the center. He was getting sideways, really wanted this stop to fix him up, a chassis adjustment, a four-tire stop, looking to get the first win for Penske Racing here. You see the wrench there. There is the chassis adjustment for the 22. Matt? And the 43, Jeff Burton, he's making his way down pit road as well. He started to lose the handle on that 40 machine, 43 machine. The overall grip was going away. He wants him to make an air pressure change on the front to try to help that. They're also going to do a track bar adjustment as well. We're closing in on seeing Kyle Busch hitting pit road. Scheduled green flag pit stops here at Atlanta. Kyle Busch, nope. the race leader. We are pitting this time. Hit the out back. Good out back. Watch a pitch. Watch a pitch right here. 3,700. Right here. Kyle and Kyle, Bush and Larson, both making their stop with 62 laps to go. Ryan Reed also on pit road. Paul Menard coming. So is Eric Jones. Here they are, Matt. And the 42 of Kyle Larson and the 18 of Kyle Bush both hit pit road at the same time. That was Chris Gale's plan. He wanted to pit with the 42 to keep them in sight. Chassis adjustment completed on the 18. No real changes on the 42. He was pretty pleased with his balance. The race off pit road. Good stop by both. Looks like the advantage is going to go to Kyle Busch and then Kyle Larson. And guys, remember, this is about the time we saw a couple of tire issues earlier in the day. Tire wear generally tends to improve as the day goes along. If we can get through all these green flag stops without any issues, could be a uh, big advantage for this guy, Kyle Busch, because he's going to get back to the track before anyone else. Saw Ryan Reed coming down with the race leaders. Too fast entering for him and adversity for his teammate as well. Darrell Wallace Jr. coming on to pit road. It looked like the 13 car Yeah, was... something with the third. Oh, man. That's a tough break 13 there. 13 was coming into the garage to call it a day. Didn't know the six was coming into his stall. That's uh... Man, that, absolutely, that could have been dangerous. A guy coming over, you know, one of his guys jumping out. That was a uh, good heads up work on everybody's part. You know, NASCAR has been really aggressive with the pit road rules, all in the name of safety. They don't want the crew members with their legs hanging over the pit wall in anticipation of the driver coming in. That's why right there things can happen. I'm yeah. sure number 13 is going to be called to the trailer to discuss his. Well, I don't know about the, the 13 driver. The spotter should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, the team or lack thereof might have might have been able to handle that situation better. Let's follow up on Brad Keselowski, eighth right now. What happened on the stop, Jamie? Long pit stop. You know, we talk about how old the surface is. Well, so is the wall. On that stop, the hose went over the wall before the tape was here, and it got stuck in the wall. That was a long stop. The crew just taped it up, and that cost Brad about five positions on the track. Tough break for the man that won the championship a few years ago in the Sprint Cup Series. If the hose gets caught, oh, you see man. it does in the wall wow. there. My hose is too short. See it right there. Oh, then it got hung up again. Yeah. That's a tough 
Tough break oh, there. Oh, man. Because that team had used a little bit of strategy at them. They came to pit road. They were one of the first cars to come there, try to take advantage of those new tires for a couple of laps while Kyle Busch was still on the track. That didn't work out. He needs a caution. So does Ty Dillon. He's not made his pit stop yet. If he could get a caution now, he would stay on the lead lap. The advantage for Kyle Busch, 2.9 seconds. Beautiful day here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. This is the first of our double dip on FS1 coming your way next. Race two for the Camping World Truck Series. You can watch it live from Atlanta Motor Speedway here on FS1. Michael going to be in the booth with Phil Parsons, Vince Welsh, racing into the night at Atlanta. Look at the difference here. Now, Brad Keselowski's done a nice job of working his way back up to sixth since they had those problems on pit road. But if you lose more than 10 seconds on the pit lane and a cycle of green flag stops, that is tough. Okay, I see 21.7. That's horrible. But when do we start making 11 five pit stops in the Xfinity series? Good point. Usually those are saved for special last pit stops on Sunday afternoon. That team is bringing it. What a great job by Joe Gibbs Racing. And to that, the advantage for Kyle Busch over over Kyle Larson prior to the stops, a half a second. He's now got a three second advantage over the runner up. And look who's in third right behind Kyle and Kyle. It's Eric Jones. What a rally for them, Matt. Nice recovery from that early lap miscue on the start. Now they pitted the same time while we had the leader of Kyle Busch and the 42 of Larson on pit road. The 20 hit pit road as well. Now his biggest issue, the car way too tight in the center at both ends of the racetrack. Entry down to the line. That's where his biggest issue was. They made an air pressure change and chassis adjustment on that 20, but he's about a full straightaway behind his teammate, Kyle Busch. You think they did exactly what the 18 did? I would say. That's what I would have done. That's, that that would have been a good call. And, <laughs> and what about Eric Jones and teammate Daniel Suarez? Those guys are pacing in the top five, running great lap times. These, they just need a caution, maybe that final adjustment that we talk so much about, and they can contend for this win. I'm looking at some of these names, though, 
inside the top ten. You mentioned Suarez, Allgaier's up there, Jeb Burton, Brandon Jones, Brennan Poole. This is a, a tough, tough place, and these guys have come here and done an excellent job Friday and Saturday. Let's go a couple steps further, Adam. Blake Cook is back in the 12th spot. J.J. Yaley in the 14 car is running 14th. These are competitive, solid runs by teams that are just scratching week in and week out to make it to the races. It's great to see the talent behind the wheel shine, and these guys get a chance to run in and near the top 10. I love those stories. You know what, though, guys? This is a racetrack that's going to show that, showcase that. It's going to showcase you as a driver, you as you're you know, being patient on the racetrack, not abusing your tires, and you're going to prevail. These guys that go out there and have fast hot rods and bust that big lap off, if they keep pushing it like that, like you can do on a regular mile and a half, you're going to pay the price at the end of you know, the, the run on this track. But it just shows you how tough it is, Adam. We talk about the speed of Kyle Busch, the, the quality of a team that Daniel Suarez has. That 11.5 pit stop tells you how many pieces to the puzzle that you got to have right if you want to be a winner. What's the confidence level for Team 19 with 48 to go, Chris? Well, he's definitely got speed, but like Clint was just saying, not abusing tires is important. His crew chief, Scott Graves, just told him, hey, we've got great speed in the car. You've got pretty good balance, but those last 10 laps are really abusing the tires. The right front that came off the car in this last pit stop was just coming apart. Scott Graves, he knows what he's talking about, right? He's pretty smart. Came Great. over from Roush Fenway, led Chris Buescher to a top five here a year ago and a championship last season. Great crew chief, and that's why I think this combo of Daniel Suarez and Graves are going to be something that is going to win races in 2016 and contend for this Xfinity championship. You know, guys, I'm, as I'm sitting here watching this race unfold, I'm getting pretty nervous about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, we have less blade, less downforce on our cars when we get out there. And, uh, you know, I think tire wear is going to be even a bigger issue as we have longer runs even tomorrow. You know, these guys, when they pitted and that cycle of green flag stops happened right around lap 100, give, give or take. They were scheduled, but they came before their fuel window was up. And because of that, it looks like everybody going to have to pit one more time before the checkered flag waves this afternoon here at Atlanta.
Who's going to get the whole shot tomorrow night at Supercross? Uh, out of the NASCAR drivers, I hope I do. I don't know who's going to get the whole shot. It's been a long, long time since I've been uh, even on a uh, dirt bike. So why are NASCAR drivers talking about getting on dirt bikes at a Supercross event? Monster Energy Supercross tonight, live on FS1, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Boyer, you're going to be there. You're leading this whole thing. What's going on? Man, I can't wait. Huge fan of Supercross. It was my first love, being on a dirt bike. That's what we did growing up as a family. But uh, have a unique opportunity to race some of my peers on on the Supercross, Jack. We're going to have a whole shot. We're going to actually have a mock-up start where we're going to go out and see who can beat who down the first turn. We look forward to that tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Under caution, four times, Joey Gase into the wall. That's the reason for the caution. Everybody last pitted at 101. You, you got to come here, right? Get tires for the stretch run. You know no, you're in your window? Huh? No doubt. We're coming, and we're going to try to have another one of those special pit stops. Kyle Busch leads Kyle Larson to pit lane. These two have been connected at the hip. Chris Neville, they're coming your way. Yeah, and Paul Menard happy with his race car. He says he's got really good takeoff speed, but he's struggling to keep the car in the bottom of the racetrack, saying he's a little bit loose in the center and off the corner. Matt? This caution pretty much seals the fate. Chris Gale had just told Kyle Busch that nobody could go the end on fuel. They were going to have to come back in. Chassis adjustment to try to help work the tightness out of the center of the corner on the 18. Meanwhile, the 42, Larson, he needed to have help turning in the center of three and four. Eric Jones said his car was neutral, just a little bit tight on the front end of the run. And the 18 group did it again. Kyle Busch holding serve, wins the battle off pit road. Kyle Larson comes off second. There were nine drivers on the lead lap. Brandon Jones will get the free pass here. Kyle Busch, the race leader, when we return to Atlanta. A doubleheader today, but tomorrow reserved for NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. It is the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500, sponsored by Coca-Cola. Our coverage begins 12.30 Eastern Time on your local Fox affiliate. You can stream the action live at Fox Sports Go. Under caution for the fourth time today, the leaders came down the pit lane. It was Kyle Busch getting out in front of Kyle Larson when they exited pit road. 
Real good stop, guys. We just had to hold up for that 43. Real good stop, though. Yeah, yeah, if we didn't have to wait for the 43 there, we'd, have been, we'd be the leader right now, so good, good stop. Here's what he was talking about, Clint. Look at that pause. That's just oh, good communication. Yeah. Spotter and pit crew saying, don't go yet. Man, I tell you, it was. That, that's good heads up communication right there. But I'm telling you, they did have him beat. Jeb Burton, though, having a great day. That was the 43 they referred to. He's going to restart eighth here. Paul Menard, Eric Jones restarting in that second row. Suarez Keslowski in row three. And keep an eye on Brennan Poole, Kevin Harvick. They're restarting 11th and 12th. The first two cars one lap down. They're fighting for that spot to get back on the lead lap should we get another caution. I'm looking forward to seeing what Paul Menard's got for him. He's slowly but steady been marching his way to the front, and he's there in position. And you talked about adjustments. Any of those cars up in that top six or eight with the right set of tires, with the right air pressure in them, they could be a story here late. 36 laps to go. Ready, ready, green flag, green flag. Good heads up start there. And Kyle Larson, you could see he had to drag his brake a little bit and allowed Menard to get to Kyle's bumper and give him a shove out to the lead. Kozlowski likes the high side. He's up there looking on the outside of Jeff Burton. Boy, that was close. Side by side for third. The orange car of Larson sliding around Suarez. Here comes Suarez's teammate. That's Eric Jones in the 20. Justin Allgaier making an aggressive move, sliding down in front of Jeb Burton. And let's not write off Kevin Harvick. He's making moves to the front, a lap down. But he knows if he can get up there, get that lap back, he can re be right back in the game. Kyle Larson makes a great move off, too. Just got lower than Menard. Going to take that second spot away. We've watched this race all afternoon, Clint, and as they get 10, 15 laps on the tires, it looks like the 42 car is the fastest one in town. And there's Yells the caution. Possible fluid off a two. Possible fluid off a two. Darrell Wallace Jr., fifth caution of the afternoon. Huge break for Kevin Harvick. Had those two unscheduled pit stops. He is going to be back on the lead lap with 34 to go. Got to give a call to Harvick for his persistence. Staying after, it's going to get that lap back. And then also Brandon Jones. He got the free pass on the last caution, just like Daytona. Steady, strong. He's solidly in the top ten. Local Georgia guy, kid that's got a lot of talent, and he's proven it today. And Elliot Sadler, who elected to take the wave around under that last caution, had last pitted at lap 96. Break for the one team. Good call by rookie crew chief Kevin Mendering. Absolutely. You just got to try to, you know, eventually it comes down to a gamble. You got to take that gamble, and that was certainly a, a gamble worth taking right there. Not what Darrell Wallace Jr. was wanting here today at Atlanta. Sixth place finish last week. Came in second in the championship chase. Three points behind Elliott Sadler. It doesn't look like he got in the wall or anything. You can see the damage from the 13 car, but almost just maybe just a flat tire run over something, some debris on the track or something. We can't win this race now if we come to pit road, boys. If you're leading, you better stay out. But we got one of our leaders. 20 sure chance. thinks so. <laughs> Going to be only 11 cars on the lead lap. And Eric Jones said, what the heck? Give me some tires with 34 laps to go. What are they saying down there, Matt? And looking at the 20 of Eric Jones, you mentioned he's hitting pit road. Four tires for the 20. Like you mentioned, fresh tires can mean anything. And he has certainly bounced back from that early miscue at the beginning of the race. Solid effort for the 20 of Jones. And want to make a correction, Matt. We had timing and scoring for a moment showing that Kevin Harvick was the first car one lap down when the caution came out. But Ty Dillon had gotten around him at the point of caution. So the big break here, as far as the free pass is concerned, to Ty Dillon, the birthday boy, back on the lead lap for the stretch run.
Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with your Grateful Nation and its dedication to supporting Special Forces veterans as they transition into their next successful career. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Hampton, Georgia, Atlanta Motor Speedway, playing host to round two for the NASCAR Xfinity Series under caution for the fifth time today, matching the number of cautions we've had in the last two races here, getting ready for a restart with 30 to go. Kyle Busch leading, Kyle Larson on the outside of that front row. These Gibbs engines, they like, uh, I don't know if they have their fuel, how their carburetor set up or whatever, but uh, when they take off on the start, their engine like blubbers a lot. Not like it's traction control or anything, but like it almost sounds like a. What's that sound like? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. As a fellow dirt racer there, Kyle, having a little fun here, what exactly does traction control sound like? <laughs> I'll leave that to you guys. <laughs> we got I'll it. tell you what, if there ever is, it sure looks like the 18's got some. Boy, he's got some traction. Lights have gone back on on the pace car. So it'll be one more lap before we go green. Set us up with 29 to go. Danielle? All right, Adam, thanks so much. 31 laps to go, and my, oh, my, it's been an eventful afternoon. <laughs> well, it has that, but that last caution, one before that, came at a good time for a lot of drivers. Your outside pole sitter, Eric Jones, as we recap, jumps the start of the race. His teammate Kyle Busch out front. That's a no-no. Pass through penalty for Eric Jones. He's worked his way back up but fell to 39th. Brad Keselowski takes the lead from Kyle Busch, lap 29. Yeah, actually, Brad Keselowski came and got tires. That's one thing that helped him and right there Ray Black Jr. he brings the caution out after losing a right front tire. Halfway through the race problems for Kevin Harvick. Yeah overheating had to make two unscheduled green flag pit stops right now he's the first driver one lap down. So thankful no one on pit road hurt right here it's been a tough go for Darrell Wallace Jr. late and then problems on pit road for Brad Keselowski the hose gets stuck in the wall Larry. Yeah a 22 second green flag mm. stop went a half a lap down but to my point that caution paid dividends for him let him get caught back up. Okay fast pit stops though for your leader Kyle Busch 11.5 seconds on that last pit stop does anyone have anything for Rowdy? Well it certainly doesn't look like it on the racetrack or on pit road for Joe Gibbs racing they do the same thing the sprint up, they knock them dead as far as pit stops on pit road. Adam, in the pre-race, Larry said Kyle's got that bucket list, wants to check off his first Xfinity win at Atlanta today. It's looking good. Which Kyle is it going to be, Kyle Busch or Kyle Larson? I think it's going to be Kyle Busch for about 20 laps and Kyle Larson for the last <laughs> 10. That car comes on strong at the end. We're just going to have to see here. I guarantee one of them Kyle's got his marker out there to put that check mark in. So when the green flag goes back in the air, there'll be 29 to go. Paul Menard, Daniel Suarez share row two. Then it's Keselowski and Allgaier. And keep an eye on Eric Jones, restarting ninth. But he came there for four fresh tires. Wow, if Suarez could have timed that big run, he had a little bit better. He could have jumped to the outside of Kyle Larson. Not a great start for the 42 car. There's your guy Menard making a move. Absolutely. You know, they got stacked up on the outside and uh, uh, you know, Suarez gave, gave Larson a big shot, kind of stacked him up and put Allgaier out on the, the three wide action. And boy, he lost a lot of spots. Right and there. you know, we talk about how difficult restarts are on the outside. We saw it again there. Larson looked like he spun his tires. Kyle Busch drove off with a really strong run on the bottom. That'll be key if there's another race restart later. And we're going to watch that all day tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I really thought that that outside line would, you know, at least hold its own a little bit better than it has. But it sure seems like the bottom is where to be. Eric Jones restarted ninth. He is working his way close to the top five. And Larson now back by Menard. Daniel Suarez trying to get a piece of the action. Larson seven tenths of a second behind race leader Kyle Busch. Eric Jones, he came to pit road, got four tires, just decided to take a chance, gamble a little bit like Boyer was talking about. Now he's going to try to take advantage of those tires and get up there and race with Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. Yeah, I saw the lap before that. He got a huge run off of two and passed two or three cars there with a big head of steam. He'll be coming. Those tires are worth something right here for sure. But now's the time to go. You don't have any time to waste. You want to get all the good you can out of him yeah, at the beginning absolutely. of this run. He's not saving tires right now. You can see Brad Keselowski slipping up, and he needs to pounce on that and take advantage of it, and it looks like he is. This could be a story. We get a caution late. He gets some of that track position made up here and has a chance to sprint to the checkered. 
<laughs> Old Brad's got his hands full Whoa. right there. That was a major wiggle. Sliding up the racetrack. Will that open the door for Eric Jones as they head toward turn three? Now Suarez going to get back down in front of him. Yeah, you can see uh, Jones just got held up right there on the bottom by Brad uh, slipping up a little bit. He checked and, and Suarez went right by him. Suarez was heading the wrong direction there, though. You could see the nose of that 19 Toyota was heading toward the outside wall and Jones it's, was able to cut left. You said it right there. I'm telling you, as you watch the rest of this race and even the race tomorrow, the cars that can stay pointed off a of turn four are going to be the ones that are fast. What happens there is you, it, it takes off. There's like one last bump off of four. You hit that thing and your front end takes off and then you, you got a lot of wheel and as it gets out to the wall, the rear end comes around, you burn the right tires, the, the rear tires off of it. And the more you do that, once you slip these tires at this racetrack, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Battle here for the eighth position. Whoa. That's Justin Allgaier who had the spot in the red and white number seven, slipping up, opens the door for the blue and white 33 of Brandon Jones. Can he complete the pass on the outside? Side lane. You know, that just showed you how much of a dog leg this track has on it and how slick this track is. He got there uh, right in the middle of the dog leg. You're actually turning a little bit, and as he side drafted off of it, his car got loose. Brennan Poole making a nice move to the inside, but he's one lap down in 13th. The second car in the one lap down category. Right now, the free pass position belongs to Harvick, and what a move there by Allgaier. That was tight. Let me tell you something the battle for eighth is <laughs> heating up, boys. Left of your screen, Eric Jones works his way up to fourth, sliding around Keselowski. And our leader, Kyle Busch, has pulled the whip out. He's got that thing in high gear, running some really fast lap. Last time by, he was over a tenth and a half of a second faster than second place Kyle Larson. You know, boys, as, as one of his peers that races against him, you, you see him leading a lot of laps like this, especially in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. When you're in this booth and you're watching this, you're trying to call this race and tell people at home what's going on. It sure bothers me him stinking up our show like this. <laughs> well, he has a tendency to do that. <laughs> Just think about the most important run, la laps he's run in his whole career, probably at Miami last fall, running hard to the checker. That's what he does so well. Threes are wild here. Brandon Jones in the 33, Jeb Burton in the 43, and Ty Dillon right there as well, Chris. Well, Brandon Jones trying to hang on to a top 10 finish, backing up that seventh place that he had at Daytona and talking with his crew chief, Mike Hillman Jr. He said, boy, this young man, he's just got so much raw speed but watching him last year in trucks he said one of the issues is he just didn't see the big picture of the race well today running late in this one right near the front i think he's trying to figure out that big picture chris he just turned 19 years old like 10 days ago to come to atlanta for the first time and do this very very impressive afternoon for brandon jones you know guys he's been at the back he's been at the front he's he's really worked himself around and been in a lot of situations which experience wise he's experienced it all and that's what he's looking for right now Brad Keselowski's led 28 laps today, fifth with 20 remaining. Good pass me down the straightaway here, Wilson. I'm overdriving the corner, trying to make up for it. They're a little better in the corner, don't get me wrong, but way better down the straightaway. Ah. See all that? We're watching. Thinks maybe that Toyota's got more power under the hood, it sounds like. Of course, here at Atlanta, you got to take aerodynamics into consideration, too. But Brad's not happy with his straightaway speed today. No, absolutely. It's interesting. Uh, you know, of course, the car that's in the front and slipping around and are not slipping around and, and is beating you through the corners is definitely going to beat you down the straightaway. But it's frustrating. It, it is. I felt that. Been on both sides of that fence. It sure is a lot more enjoying when you're the one saying, man, they're getting smaller in the mirror. All right. We talked about Kyle Busch would lead this thing for 20 laps, and I thought maybe Kyle Larson would close in on him at the end of the race. That's starting to happen. Last time by, just about a tenth of a second favorite to Kyle Larson. They broke about even that time, but you can see that distance between the 42 and the 18 is closing a bit. I think them two have definitely separated themselves. Uh, it's a two-car two, two car race right now. I mean, can Kyle Larson catch him? That's the question. As they get into traffic, we saw it earlier in the race. They got held up one time, and, and the second-place car got right on him and got around him. So it's going to be interesting as they get into this lap traffic here. Going to be 17 to go this time by. Certainly plenty of time. The interval at the line, 1.37 seconds. This thing isn't over. There's a lot of racing to go. We know how these tires give up and how the cars will start to slip. 
He's just close enough to be aggravating to Kyle Busch right now, right? You got to look in the mirror and see him just lurking back there. Oh, absolutely. And you know they're both driving the wheels off of it. And also trying to be patient and trying to keep the tires on a little bit because if the caution comes out, who knows what's going to happen. And Kyle Busch has seen this movie before. You saw it on the graphic. No wins here. Five times a runner-up at Atlanta Motor Speedway and Sprint Cup competition. One of only three active tracks where he has not gotten to victory lane. Next week at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, his home track, zero wins there. Also has failed to win on the road course at Watkins Glen in Xfinity competition, but in position to finish it off today, Larry. Yeah, Clint Boyer, you know what's going to happen if the caution comes out. Four more Goodyear tires for everybody. Yeah, but we did see that. I mean, it's a it's a race off of pit road. Without that 43 car, that 42 would have been the, the leader. So uh, maybe that'll happen. Had to get up off the bottom there and run the high groove off turn two because of a slower car. See if Larson can close in. Last couple of laps, Kyle has reestablished his speed and beaten Kyle a couple of tenths. Kyle Busch started on the poles, led 104 of our 148 laps. Paul Menard has slid back to fourth. Eric Jones continues his drive to the front, and there's Menard repassing the 20 as those two duke it out for third on track. Toyota leads a couple of Chevys. The Ford of Keselowski is in the top five, too, so we got one of, one of each up front. You know, these two have been at it for quite a while here. The last few laps I've been watching, it's a pretty good battle. You can see they're, uh, it's getting getting down to the, the pay windows open, and they're going for it. <laughs> Look at Menard. He's able to peek just to the inside of Jones, but couldn't make the move work. This is one of those tracks, too. It just reminds you of the dirt track. You know, you slip the side around, you make a mistake. The guy gets around you, and two laps later, he goes in the corner, makes the same mistake, and you go back around. And, and all the while, you got a smile on your face from ear to ear because it's, it's just one of those places that's so much fun to get around. And this is fun to watch. No give and take here with 13 laps to go. You know, it's such a, a neat thing to sit up here and watch this Xfinity series play out. Uh, it's a good blend of drivers. You got cup guys that these Xfinity drivers are learning from, just like it always has been. But this is a new generation of drivers coming in. A lot of youth in this thing and a lot of fun to watch. Look at Kyle Larson. He's found a groove up top. We talk about his talent to run high. He's gone high in turn one and two, Clint. Last time by three tenths faster than our leader, Kyle Busch. I think this 42th car has found something to chase him down with. You know, that's what I love about Kyle uh, Larson every time ever since he's been in this sport he's that dirt racing watching him race sprint cars this is how he drives if it's not getting the job done following somebody he's going to move out find a new groove and he's going to run them down last time the NASCAR Xfinity Series went to a mile and a half track Homestead season finale last year it was Kyle Larson that won on that Saturday afternoon in South Florida looking for career win number four here and if he's going to get it he's going to have to run down the best all time in the Xfinity series Kyle Busch the advantage now ticking uh, ticking back up toward a second. Yeah, I just see his, his front end not working, you know, quite as good as he, he wants it to. When he runs that bottom, you can see that he's washing up in the center and really fighting to hold it down on that yellow line. Let's watch that tracker here, though. This is where I saw him really making time, moving up to the top of the track. He's a little over a second, doesn't gain much time there, but look down the back straightaway. The ticker just gets less and less because he's got that momentum off the corner. He's making it work. Be interesting to see him run three and four up top one time. He's so good up there. He likes the bottom in three and four. Doesn't look like he gains any ground, even loses a little bit, and then he gets it all back to the other end. You know, it's just like I was saying, all, all day long right there off of four, that car that stays pointed and keeps digging and drives straight off the corner, and I think you could see uh, really well right there with the 42 kind of washed up, and then he fishtailed and spun the tires up off. If he's going to run him down, I think he's going to have to do it on the top. Look at that momentum down the back gaining a tenth of a second on the back straightaway. Working as hard as you've worked all day in this situation? Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> I said, pay windows open. And just think about what Brett Keselowski said. I'm overdriving the corners. you got to be careful about that, too. He can see that leader up there. He can taste this win, and he'll have a tendency to shoot in the corner too far. It is, but if you're down on horsepower, you got to make it up somewhere, and I think that's what he was trying to convey on the radio. You know, I'm having to overdrive the car into the corners and do things I know that you're not supposed to do, but it's the only way I can prevail. Saw Ty Dillon there, was a lap down, got the free pass. 
battling Daniel Suarez for sixth with eight laps to go. Be seven laps to go when we come back to the start finish line. Kyle Busch has the lead, but it's back under a second. Kyle Larson trying to reel him in as time winds down here at Atlanta. <laughs> This is good stuff. Trimmed a little more off of it right there. I like this outside line in, in one and two. He really gets a good run off of two, and, and I think that's if, if it's going to happen, that's where it's going to happen. I want to see him do it down here in three and four. I think he can make some ground up there. He doesn't do anything down here with Kyle. Of course, Kyle Larson is an experienced guy. You talk about dirt racing. He knows to look around for the groove, and look at that. He's got it down to seven-tenths of a second. This is as close as we have seen the gap really since the restart. Well, we talked about the short run speed of Kyle Busch and the long run speed of Larson. He's going to have to run bottom here. We'll see see if it holds down. You can see it fishtailing around, but he's, he's driving the wheels off of it. <laughs> you knew it was going to come down to lap traffic and things like that, and, and but that's what's fun about watching being a fan of this sport. I mean, there's so many elements that go into uh, winning and losing these races. Coming off turn four, we'll see five laps to go. And the advantage for Kyle Busch hanging right at seven You've tenths got of a second. Plenty of time here. Plenty of time. Look at the lap traffic in front of him. What role will that play as we finish this thing off? It's going to rob a little momentum from Kyle Busch there on exit. He couldn't go out next to the wall. But now they're going to be side by side when Larson gets to him. 24 of Corey LaJoy sliding down to that inside lane. Oh man, I love a Gets good out battle. Of Larson's way. Yeah, it's a really good view right there. It watches, you know, you can see the car slipping, sliding around, and what you fight all day long inside. Four laps to go, half a second separating the top two, and there's Larson once again digging in that outside lane. He's using it all right there. <laughs> You're right, he is digging. And these two have finished one, two on three different occasions. Each time it's been Kyle Busch that got the checkered flag. But Kyle Larson trying to close here. It will be three laps to go this time. The advantage just over a half a second. Making that high line work. He likes to run that seam that some tracks you want to stay off of. It looks like there might be a little grip with the seam there. Yeah, I thought the same thing in practice. I was I was curious to see as this race went on if they were going to get above that and ride the wall. And it doesn't look like there's much grip up there. So I'd say I'll be on that seam tomorrow as well. <laughs> Three miles to his first ever win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Kyle Busch. Two laps to go, and he's stuck in behind a lap vehicle. Will that help Kyle Larson here? Oh, it's going to be tough for Larson to make his run off, too. That's hurting him. Yeah, that hurt yeah. bad right there. And Ryan Priest in the 01, just nowhere to go. When you're running that outside like that, you need all the track you can get for the momentum. You really kind of let the car unwind and run the, the wall up off and just run out of real estate there. That may have ended the rally. The white flag is out. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Kyle Busch trying to deliver for the first time here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. 2008 got the first win here for Toyota in NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Joe Gibbs has never won here in the Xfinity Series. And Kyle Busch trying to cross another one off the list. Coming off of turn four, finally, Kyle Busch going to win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Back to the line. He delivers. Eric Jones coming in third right there. What a day they for them, you know, the whole crew uh, to battle back from that mishap on the first start. Uh, they put in a hard day's work. Well, the cup experience prevailed at the front of the field, but great runs by some of our young Xfinity racers. Eric Jones in third, Suarez back in seventh, Ty Dillon, top five finish, Justin Algar. These are guys that are going to battle for a championship this year, and obviously they have a lot of speed. What about that call for Elliott Sadler? Take the wave around, got the pit stop. He ends up inside the top 10 and Jeb Burton there as well. He's the all-time wins leader in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. 77 times Kyle Busch has been to victory lane.
And winning a lot comes learning how to do a good burnout, too. You know when he shows up on Saturdays, he's going to be a threat. Last 15 starts in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Kyle Busch has gone to victory lane seven times, and that's his 26th win at a mile-and-a-half track. Clint Boyer said it before the break. He knows how to win, and because of that, he knows how to celebrate. There is the patented bow from Kyle Busch. Checkered flag in hand, a burnout again. Took him 12 starts here at Atlanta, but he's finally crossed this one off the list, and he's in victory lane, Matt Yoakum. No driver more goal-oriented in the garage area than Kyle Busch. The offseason, you circled this one as what's missing from your racing resume after five times of finishing second. What does this mean to put the big check mark? Uh, it means a lot. You know, it, uh, it's been a while, but uh, it certainly means a lot, you know, just to accomplish some of my goals that I have in racing. And to come out here and to do this today and uh, to beat Kyle Larson, this, this must be his favorite tracks or one of the – just being able to move all over this racetrack, and he's really good here too. So, real proud of our team. This non synergy drink Camry was fast. Looks really, really good too on the racetrack. Looks even better in victory lane. So, pumped for them and uh, our relationship one race back and being in victory lane. First time being in Atlanta, never won here before. So, can't say enough about JGR engines, whole team, Chris Gale, Toyota, TRD, um, everybody that does such a great job for us. So, um, you know, this is a pretty neat deal. Glad to get it out of the way, checked off the list and back in the 18 in victory lane. But how concerned were you? Two runs ago, Larson really seemed to close late in the going. Were you concerned about that same thing happening on the final run? I was. I, I actually thought that last run was going to be too long uh, for our car, which was better for Larson's car. And, um, you know, we made some adjustments. Gale did a good job making some adjustments to our car. And it, it helped me. It helped me definitely on the front side of the run for about the first 20. 
And I don't think it hurt me for from there on to the end of the race, but Larson was just better than us. He can kind of close and close and close. And lap traffic, you know, you're trying to figure it out. They were really nice to me. I think they screwed him up a couple times. So um, appreciate all those guys. And, of course, too, you know, the, going way, way, way back to the beginning of the race with um, with Eric Jones, I I was spinning my tires. I, I hated that he got busted for, uh, for beating me to the line. I was trying to get there. Uh, I'm glad to see that he came back for a solid third-place finish. So, um, you know, proud of all the JGR. The 18 colors back in victory lane, win number 77. It's a special one. Jamie? Kyle Larson certainly kept it exciting. We stayed on that battle for so long, Kyle, watching you hang it out, trying to take it. But Kyle mentioned there the lappers. If the lappers weren't there, a couple of them, do you think you would have had a shot there at the end? I definitely would have got closer to him. It would have been still tough to pass him. You know, he was saving his tires, I think, uh, around the bottom, and I was running pretty hard up top. So uh, he would have definitely moved up in front of me there, one and two, and it would have been tough to get underneath him. But uh, the Enio Chevy was was really good. I was I was very happy, um, a little bit better than I thought we were going to be. You know, I thought we'd be, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth place car, and we were definitely, you know, you know, first, second best, I thought. So uh, happy about that. Really excited about all the model house that I'll get to run, you know, later on this year. These are, uh, you know, new cars built at Chip Ganassi Racing. And, and ever since we built new ones, we've been fast. You know, it should have won Texas, uh, won Homestead, and, and could have won here today. So uh, really happy about that. And, and just hats off to everybody at the shop for, for all their hard work on both the Xfinity side and Cup side. Drivers, don't forget the ones that get away. But his next shot at it will be California in two weeks, Adam. Yeah, Justin Mark's going to jump behind the wheel next week. Good opportunity for him and the team car. Nice job today. Rookie Brennan Poole inside the top 15. He was 14th. The victors go to Kyle Busch.